A scientist named Quint has a wife and children that are terminally ill due to an incurable disease. Because his love for them is strong, he vows to cure them by studying the DNA structure of the biologically immortal jellyfish. Quint hopes to extract the DNA of this creature and use it for his family. But while this might sound like a noble cause, it is not without controversy. His experimentation is unethical because his subjects are nevertheless human beings. Still, he carries on with his research to cure them. First, Quint brings his comatose wife, Jessie, to an undisclosed research location where his kids, Miles and Flora, are already staying. Noticing that his kids are becoming worse by the day due to the same disease that Jesse has, he asks his old colleague named Charlie for help regarding some stem cells that he needs for research. However, Charlie warns him that his cruel former employer, Masterson, is searching for him. Quint insists on continuing the research, which he plans to do by replacing his family's organs with organs from pigs. To solve the problem of cell incompatibility, he needs stem cells from human embryos. Unfortunately, Charlie tells him that there are no more human embryos because Masterson has disposed of them all. Quint finds this weird because Masterson is also working on a cure for her son named Luke, which requires extensive research on stem cells. As such, Quint has to rely on the promises of an organ dealer and close friend named Griffin who asks for various things from him, and yet she does not deliver what Quint wants. Growing impatient with the lack of developments in his research, Quint figures that he will have to freeze his comatose wife and his children to halt the progress of their disease. He first tries this freezing technique on one of their clone dogs to see if it is effective. While he is doing this, Miles and Flora are discussing quite brilliantly the scientific process behind it. However, their echoing voices are distracting Quint from his research. Still, he manages to achieve the freezing of the dog, which will feel as if one is sleeping for a prolonged period of time. In the course of his research work, Quint is haunted by the spirit of his comatose wife. Although she is not yet dead, she appears to him as some sort of guilt or conscience for the scientist. Later on, Quint goes to a warehouse to supposedly meet with Griffin. However, he shockingly discovers that Griffin's organs were taken away from her by Masterson. After Masterson's assistant, Dita, punches the scientist right on his stomach for transacting with Griffin, Masterson tells him to come work for her again because he is a brilliant scientist. Seeing Griffin's horrible end, Quint cannot help but cry for his friend. He then tells Masterson that he will work for her if she provides him with stem cells. For this reason, Masterson points into an incinerator, hinting him to burn Griffin and her organs to cover up the crime. She and Dita then leave the premises. Afterward, Quint has no choice but to do these horrible acts. While tossing the organs to the incinerator, Jess's ghost appears again to reprimand him for cooperating with Masterson. Acting as his conscience, Jess's ghost attempts to convince him that those stem cells that he wants will come from fetuses. But Quint lashes out at her because he believes that the end justifies the means. If unethical sacrifices need to be made so that they can cure diseases, then he is fine with that. After dismantling the corpse, Quint receives some papers about the topic of stem cells from Dita. Of course, this is not what he wants from her and Masterson. He wants the real thing. He then warns that Masterson must keep her promise if she really wants him to cooperate in her son's recovery. The following day, Charlie visits Quint in his research laboratory. She tries to convince him to let her in his research because she is there to help him. To prove this, Charlie tells him that she saved his research notes and works back on her old laboratory. However, instead of letting her in, Quint tells her to deliver his research notes and works here like she is some kind of errand girl. Even though she disagrees with this treatment, Charlie complies with his demand because she genuinely wants to help him. And so she leaves the place a bit distraught. A while later, Masterson shows up again to see the developments that Quint has made for her son Luke. Quint points out that he has managed to do research developments regarding the immortal jellyfish, but Masterson does not care about this. She wants him to pace his research up. Learning that Masterson will not easily give the stem cells, Quint becomes more and more depressed by this turn of events. He feels so helpless in saving his wife and children from imminent death. But still not losing hope, Quint begins to extensively pour out his time into research to the point of exhaustion. One day, he manages to clone a fetus out of his wife's cell. It is here that Jess's ghost praises him for creating a baby boy, which is still an embryo at this point. However, Quint quickly tells the ghost that it doesn't matter anyway because he will just freeze that to be used for later. The ghost disagrees with this and tells him that it is her baby, pointing out that his soul has turned dark due to science. Because of this, Quint has a hard time sleeping as he keeps on thinking about what the ghost told him. The next day, Masterson visits him along with her assistant Dita and her disabled son Luke. Seeing her arrive, Quint quickly tells his children to go hide in a secret room. Again, Quint reiterates that all he needs from her are stem cells. If he can provide these, he will definitely help her in curing his son. 
Seeing that the man is desperate for it, Masterson finds this opportunity to offer him a dangerous job. Without knowing what it is, Quint tells her that he just wants stem cells and nothing else. The following day, Charlie goes back to the research laboratory's gate. She tosses all of Quint's research works into the ground, clearly irritated at the scientist. Seeing this, Quint immediately heads out to meet her. When Charlie asks him where the kids are, Quint realizes that they are missing, as well as the clone dog. Because of this, the two of them search for the kids all throughout the area, with Quint looking for them deep in the forest while Charlie looks further inside the laboratory. There, Charlie discovers the freezing machines. Quint calls her via walkie-talkie, telling her that he has finally found Miles and Flora, as well as the clone dog. After the search, they all return to the laboratory. Charlie later tells him that he needs to rest rather than further overwork his already overworked mind. The following morning, Quint questions his children about how they escaped from the room yesterday. Miles admits that it was his fault and that they found a way out of the room. But instead of being furious, Quint is not angered by this, even offering his children some pancakes. He loves his children so much that he cannot afford to be angry at them. Charlie, who is staying alone in a room inside the laboratory, looks at Quint, thinking him as a good father. She also lovingly smells his shirt. This is because she and Quint were old lovers in the past that had since fallen apart. After dealing with his kids, Quint sees that Charlie is already waiting for him in the other room. When Charlie greets him with a good morning, he responds coldly by saying that she should leave immediately. This is not the response that Charlie anticipated from the man, so she confronts him about it. She angrily sweeps some things in front of Quint who is not even looking at her. Charler then tells him that whatever research he is doing, it cannot simply be done due to how complex it is. As a final nail in the coffin of their relationship, Charlie tells him that Quint is done dealing with him. But Quint is not moved by this as he just nonchalantly drinks an energy pill to sustain him throughout the day. In his mind, he is doing it for his family. Nothing else matters. Afterward, his experiences from before Charlie arrived remain the same. He is still haunted by the ghost of his comatose wife. Jess's ghost tells him the importance of memories and sustaining oneself against the cruelty of one's situation. Here, Quint reminisces about the fun times he had with Miles and Flora, thinking to himself if those good times will ever return. The following day, Quint rushes to where Masterson and Dita are located. It turns out that they have built an unethical embryo farm, consisting of live human subjects. Upon seeing this horrible sight, Quint loudly criticizes Masterson for what she had done, but the vile woman just smiles at him. She answers him that they need to be alive to extract the embryos and the stem cells. When Quint tells her that there has to be another way, Masterson just interrupts him by saying that she will not accept any excuses from him at this point, reiterating the main reason for her gracious help, which is to save her beloved son Luke. Some days later, Quint discovers that after nine days of being frozen, one of his clone dogs is alive and well without any noticeable side effects. This is a breakthrough in his research because it means that he can save his kids by freezing them in the meantime. But Jess's ghost warns him that this will not save their children. Despite this, he carries on with his research. While he is making the final touches on the machines that will be used for freezing, Flora approaches him and asks if she and her brother can at least see their mother before being frozen. As a response, he silently hugs her and then allows both of his children to see their comatose mother. While they are beside their mother, Quint is once again talking to Jess's ghost who urges him again to stop the dangerous and unethical experiment on her children. However, Quint is still resolute in his decision to take chances rather than do nothing in preventing their imminent death. During this, the kids witness how Quint is talking and arguing with himself. Afterward, Quint discusses this momentous life and death decision with his children which will happen later that night. The kids tell him that they are not afraid of what will happen to them. However, Flora wants to pack her bags in case she will never return, showing that she is already thinking maturely. But Quint reassures her that she will definitely come back. As such, Flora lays out the condition that if she dies, she does not want to be resurrected. Miles also joins the conversation, insisting to be frozen with his sister. No matter how much Quint tries to convince them, the children are simply inseparable from each other. That night, before he freezes them, Quint decides to have some fun with the kids by looking at their old pictures. At this point, Jess's ghost is not even vocally criticizing him. She just looks at him with sad eyes. With the children later falling asleep, it is now time for Quint to transfer them into the metallic machines that will freeze them. After doing this, he just stares at a robot with an empty gaze, clearly troubled by what he has done and what the future holds for his research. The following day, while he is dissecting a monkey, Diva intrudes and forcefully plants his face on the bloody body that he is experimenting with. Masterson enters the scene and furiously calls him out for hiding his research about freezing bodies. What this means for Masterson is that he must be hiding more from her. 
Quint informs her that she is not a suitable candidate for freezing because every machine is custom made. However, Masterson is not pleased with this, ordering him to figure it out at once so that she and Luke can benefit from it. But before she leaves, she wants to see the machines first. Upon seeing that there are two machines, the vile woman immediately orders Quint to remove his children inside. She then informs Luke that they will be frozen and that they will be regenerated into their much younger self once Quint becomes successful with his research regarding the immortal jellyfish. Quint pleads with Masterson to allow him more time to work on resurrecting his children out of being frozen because it is a fragile process. One mistake can cost his children's lives. Masterson allows him to do this, so he quickly gets back to work resurrecting Miles and Flora. While preparing his tools, Quint cannot help but shake in panic and anxiety. There and then, he decides to betray Masterson and Dita. He locks the door that leads to his research facility, causing the two vile women to forcefully open the door. As they open the door, Quint is already concocting a makeshift explosive inside the facility. He then escapes the facility via the same pathway that his children had used earlier. By doing this, Quint manages to stealthily come back to where Masterson, Dita, and Luke are located. Still, Masterson notices his presence and immediately calls for Dita, who has already broken through the door. Here, Quint throws the concoction that he made, causing it to explode on Dita's face. This results in Dita bleeding to death from the explosion. Seeing this, Masterson pulls out a sword that is hidden inside her cane. She manages to stab Quint right in his stomach. But instead of gaining the upper hand over him, Masterson gets her throat sliced instead. Both of them are wounded, but it is clear that the injury Masterson got is fatal. Here, the wheelchaired Luke takes the gun beside Dita and points it at Quint. At first, it may appear that this is retaliation for what Quint had done to his mother, but Luke surprisingly pulls the trigger on his mother instead. It turns out that he does not agree with her methods all along. He then pulls the trigger on himself, ending his miserable existence. Bleeding to death, Quint hurriedly heads to the computer to tell Charlie about what happened. Because of this, Charlie comes to save his life and decides to help him again with his research. After a long time of trying to figure out the secrets behind the immortal jellyfish's regeneration, Quint finally succeeds during one of his experiments. The two of them further discover that this regenerating strain is also available to human beings, although in small doses only. Since they cannot find a way to synthesize the strain from the jellyfish to that of the human, they decide to instead focus on enhancing the bone marrow's capability to produce these strains. As such, Quint intends to cure his comatose wife and frozen kids with the regenerating strain. Seeing that he is finally close to curing them, Quint happily sets up a welcome home banner for his wife and children. Aside from this, he intends to use Jess's stored embryo to produce the first generic baby, a superhuman that can regenerate at a much faster rate than normal. With this, even immortality is not out of the question because regeneration could open the pathways toward curing diseases in old age. While he is tinkering with the embryo, Charlie sees him and asks what he is doing. Upon learning that it is Jess's embryo and that he intends to create the first chimeric baby out of it, darkness takes over Charlie's heart. She seems to be jealous of Jesse whom Quint is still thinking about, so instead of helping him she drugs him, causing him to become groggy. With Quint not of sound mind, Charlie first calls the police to quickly head to their location. She then injects a serum into his body that forces him to sleep. In a dark turn of events, Charlie removes all life support from the comatose Jesse, killing her. After that, she plants some incriminating evidence on Quint's body to frame him for the wife's death, making it look like a murder caused by insanity. With that detail out of the way, she proceeds to inject the chimeric embryo inside of her so that she can be the one to produce the first chimeric baby. Then, she goes to terminate the live human subjects at the nearby embryo farm that Masterson had constructed earlier against Quint's protests. Charlie decides to also frame this on Quint too. As a final act of deception and betrayal, Charlie removes all her clothing and runs toward a room inside the facility, intending to show that she is supposed to be the next victim to be experimented upon. At this point, the police have finally arrived, they are to see the frozen children whom they attempted to revive. But since resurrection is a delicate process as Quint has pointed out earlier, the paramedics fail to bring them back to life. With that, everything that Quint has worked hard for vanishes in just one evening. He is eventually arrested for the crimes he did not commit. As he is taken out of the building, he sees Charlie being treated by the paramedics, looking at him as though she is innocent. He also sees his children being delivered in a covered gurney, which puts him in agony. A few years later, Charlie is interviewed about her new company called Chamera Pharmaceuticals. There she takes credit for everything that Quint had done, even deciding to gloss over some details like live human subjects and animal experimentation. 
Charlie tells the interviewer about that one particular evening when Quint had supposedly gone mad and went into a murdering spree. According to her, she intends to unlock further the secrets of the immortal jellyfish so that someday, the idea of an immortal human being is not just a fantasy anymore. Afterward, Charlie heads back to the now-closed laboratory where she gives birth to a baby boy. However, instead of treating him with motherly love, the cruel and monstrous Charlie only sees him as a means to an end. Without hesitation, she experiments on his chimeric abilities. During that time, Quint is also being executed for his non-existing crimes. Before he succumbs to death, he sees the complete ghost of his family, making him smile because they are now at least reunited with each other. Despite having a shorter runtime than the usual science fiction movies, this particular movie manages to lay down its whole plot in a concise manner. Aside from this, the story itself beautifully unravels, eventually coming together in the end in a heartbreaking revelation. Aside from the lesson about greed and profit, which is shown most prominently at the end, the movie also shows that love is truly one of mankind's greatest motivators in doing things, even the impossible. This is evident with Quint, Masterson, and even Charlie who had decided to commit the betrayal out of a distorted view of love.